and welcome to this week's News Bulletin from the Christian Institute. Housing Minister Grant Shapps has given his backing to Christian employee Adrian Smith, who was demoted for a private posting he made on Facebook. Bosses at the Trafford Housing Trust in Manchester ruled that Mr Smith's comments on the registration of civil partnerships in churches and equality too far had damaged the organisation's reputation and amounted to gross misconduct. They demoted him from his managerial post and cut his pay by 40%. But Government Minister Mr Shapps has agreed with comments made by homosexual activist Peter Tatchell, who branded the disciplinary action taken against Mr Smith as excessive and disproportionate. Mr Shapps' comments came in a letter to Stuart Jackson MP, who had raised the issue in Parliament and questioned the Trust's public funding. Mr Shapps also added in a handwritten note at the end of the letter, well done for highlighting this case. The appeal court hearing of Christian B&B owners Peter and Hazel Mary Bull has been taking place this week. The Bulls are seeking to overturn a decision earlier this year in which they were ordered to pay £3,600 in damages to Martin Hall and his civil partner Stephen Preddy for not allowing them to share a double room. Ben Rochelle reports. Peter and Hazel Mary Bull were back in court this week in an attempt to overturn a ruling by Judge Andrew Rutherford that their policy of restricting double rooms to married couples discriminated against homosexuals. James Dingermans, QC, acting for the Bulls, told the court that the effect of the ruling was to rate Hall and Preddy's rights higher than those of the hotel owners. He said, that is simply wrong. If human rights are to have any future at all, they must respect all rights. The Bulls have an absolute right to believe that extramarital sexual behaviour is wrong and a qualified right to manifest that belief. Preddy and Hall's barrister responded, saying that the Bulls' policy amounted to direct discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation because homosexual couples could never satisfy the Bulls' policy and that the previous ruling should be upheld. The judgment has been reserved, with a ruling not expected for several weeks. Opposition to redefining marriage in Scotland is strong and deeply held, according to the leader of the Roman Catholic Church in Scotland, Cardinal Keith O'Brien. He was speaking as a fresh wave of 100,000 postcards were sent out to help parishioners make their views known. Some ministers from the Church of Scotland have also asked to be included in the mailing. Cardinal O'Brien said, We have been overwhelmed at the take-up and it's crystal clear that it underlines the strength and depth of the opposition to same-sex marriage. And Bashir Mann, spokesman for the Glasgow Central Mosque, has confirmed that Muslim and Roman Catholic leaders in Scotland will meet to discuss a joint response to the Scottish Government's plans to redefine marriage. Mr Mann said, We will talk about how we can try to influence the Government. We don't want them to go ahead with this. Civil partnerships are enough. Why go further and offend people? The Scottish Government is currently holding a consultation on whether to rewrite the definition of marriage. The consultation will finish in December. And at Westminster, David Cameron risks losing the votes of churchgoers by pressing ahead with his plans to redefine marriage according to a new survey. The poll, conducted by Comres, has revealed that 83% of churchgoers are opposed to Mr Cameron's plans to legalise same-sex marriage. And over half of them feel so strongly about it that it would make them less likely to vote Conservative at the next election. 88% were concerned that schools would be required to teach the equal validity of same-sex and heterosexual relationships. And 93% were concerned that clergy would have to conduct same-sex marriages against their consciences. Mr Cameron has said that a public consultation will take place next year on how, not if, marriage will be redefined. But the Reverend Rod Thomas, Chairman of Reform, has urged Church of England ministers to do all they can in the coming months to prepare people to respond to the consultation and make their voices heard. He said that the government's own studies have shown that children thrive best in a home where there is both a father and a mother. It is an attempt to redefine marriage so that the link with childbearing and child rearing is broken and so that any idea that marriage is a gift from God is demolished. Some news in brief now, and in a debate on the Protection of Freedoms Bill in the House of Lords this week, Lord Deer has said that freedom of speech is being hampered by public order legislation. Lord Deer is a former inspector of constabulary. His comments come following the launch of a government consultation on public order policing. 
Lord Deer said he supported calls to improve Section 5 of the Public Order Act by removing the word insulting. Civil liberties, secularist and faith groups have been campaigning for removal of the word insulting on the grounds that it criminalises free speech. Baroness Cox has said in a radio interview on the BBC that her bill to tackle problems caused by Sharia councils operating in the UK will help prevent discrimination against women. Lady Cox introduced the arbitration bill to the House of Lords early this year and under the legislation it will become a crime to falsely claim legal jurisdiction over criminal or family law. The bill makes clear that laws against sex discrimination apply to arbitration tribunals, firmly outlawing the Sharia practice of treating a woman's testimony as worth half that of a man's. Australian euthanasia campaigner Dr Philip Nietzsche is set to hold a seminar on suicide methods in the seaside town of Eastbourne as part of his tour of Britain. Eastbourne has one of the highest populations of retired and elderly people in the UK. Even advocates of assisted suicide have expressed concern about Dr Nietzsche's visit. Dignity in Dying, a pro-euthanasia lobby group, has branded the proposed tour as dangerous and irresponsible. Finally, Songs of Praise will remain a Christian programme and not become multi-faith, the BBC's Head of Religion and Ethics, Akhil Ahmed, has said. In September, a Sikh executive at the corporation suggested Songs of Praise may explore the inclusion of other faiths in the future. But Mr Ahmed, speaking at the Church and Media Forum last month, gave his assurances that Songs of Praise, which is currently celebrating its 50th anniversary, would remain the BBC's flagship Christian programme. Mr Ahmed, a Muslim, was presented with a commemorative plaque for Songs of Praise on behalf of Britain's churches. At the same event, Gwyneth Williams, controller of BBC Radio 4, said she valued the thought for the day slot on the Today programme as a moment of spiritual reflection in the hectic news agenda. Thought for the day has previously faced pressure from atheist groups to become secular, but the BBC rejected demands. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.